Hello, this is Jack Jackson again. I'm going to be talking uh, today about descriptive statistics. And this is a part one of a series of lectures uh, that we will have here, have videos for. This one is an introduction to the topic. So, uh, the basic topics on this series of lectures is to talk about uh, an introduction. There will be a lecture each on these topics. Introduction, size, measures of relative standing, central tendency, variability, outliers, shape, and changes over time. Descriptive statistics is used to make sense of data, allowing us to effectively find and communicate important information from the data set in order to reach conclusions and make good decisions. So, it organizes and makes sense of data, uses numerical and graphical methods, which we'll see some of each here. It identifies patterns in data. We can use it to isolate and summarize key information. It simplifies the information, focusing on the items of interest, meanwhile eliminating undesired information to avoid information overload. So we do lose some information when we describe a data set with statistics, but what we gain is much more clarity in the items that we are interested in. In descriptive statistics, we'll be dealing with charts and graphs of different types, a variety of different types, but they all should have several things in common. One thing, they should be clearly labeled with a title saying what it is that the graph or chart or table is about. Also, there should be charts, headings, and labels on the axes, so each column or a row in a table should be clearly labeled with what it is, what units go with it, and so forth. Axes. On our graphs, the same thing is true for them. They should have a very clear scale. If there's a numerical scale there, it should be clearly marked out in such a way that we can, can have no doubt about what the scale is. It should also include our appropriate units on both the X and the Y or input-output axes if we have those. When we do have a numerical scale, it should be consistent in scale and in units. Uh, for the most part, we like to have everything in the same units, like if it's in feet, we like to have everything in feet, uh, not some in feet, some in inches. Um, let's see, it should be consistently spaced out on our scale. Um, a distance from horizontally from 1 to 2 should be the same as from 2 to 3. We need to have something that cites the source of our information. This is often down below the table or sometimes above it but we uh, need to say where we got that information so the user can look that up if they want to know uh, to go back to the source. The charts and graphs should clarify data and not distort anything. There are lots of ways to um, manipulate data in such a way that it distorts what is actually happening. That is not a good chart or graph. So every time we work with a chart or graph it should have all of these elements. When we're analyzing and representing data, we're often interested in deciding something about that data or examining something. And oftentimes, we have the following characteristics that we're interested in. The first category is size. How big is the sample or its parts? Um, maybe just the total sample, maybe just the frequency of certain subcategories. Measures of relative standing. Those measure how does a value compare to the rest of the values. For example, um, at what what is a value so that half the value is below it, for example, or where is a value so that 75% is below it. Measures of central tendency try to find or describe, uh, usually with a single number, uh, the center, middle, average, or typical value. Variability is measuring how variable or its opposite, how consistent data is, how spread out is it. Outliers are unusually large or small data values. Do we have any of these? If so, what are they? Shape describes a shape of the graph of all of the data points. Let's say a dot plot, for example, that we'll look at a little bit later. Is the data spread out evenly? Or is it mounted up in the middle? Or is it mounted off to one side? 
or the other side. So those are the things that we might be interested in. And finally, changes over time or changes in general. If we collect similar data at different times, do we get significantly different results? If we collect it for two different populations, is there something different about those two things? And so those are the, those are the basic areas. So we'll have a little lecture uh, over each one of